Hello everyone, I am Nivedita Channa from Amrita Prasad Research Foundation. Welcome to all of you to our channel, Biodiversity and Conservation. So today we are going to discuss about the biogeochemical cycles, its types, its phases, and difference between these chemical processes and the significance. So let's start. So the bio refers to living organisms and geo refers to art. The term biogeochemical implies that biological, geological and chemical factors are all involved in the process. The close interaction of biological and geochemical processes is reflected in the expression biogeochemical cycles. The movement of those elements and inorganic compounds which are essential to life is termed nutrient cycling. So geochemistry is the science dealing with the chemical composition of R and with the exchange of elements between different parts of R's crust, its atmosphere and its oceans, rivers and other bodies of water. The concept of geochemistry is credited to the Russian scientist Polynov and is defined as the role of chemical elements in the synthesis and decomposition of all kinds of materials with special emphasis on weathering. Biogeochemistry, a science founded by the Russian VI, Vernadeskich and made prominent by the early monographs. And it involves the study of the exchange of materials between living and non-living components of the ecosystem. The key cycles that include the carbon cycle, where carbon moves between living organisms, that atmosphere and the earth's crust, and the nitrogen cycle involving the cover conversion of nitrogen between different forms. And these cycles are vital for sustaining life, regulating nutrient availability, and influencing global climate patterns. Then coming to its types, from the viewpoint of biosphere as a whole, biogeochemical cycles fall into two basic groups. One is gaseous cycles. In this, the reservoir is the atmosphere or the hydrosphere. Gaseous cycles include those of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon and water. And the another one is sedimentary cycles. In this, the reservoir is the earth's crust. Sedimentary cycles include those of iron, calcium, phosphorus, and other more earth-bound elements. Both involve biotic and abiotic agents. Both are uh, dri driven by the flow of energy. <laughs> Both are tied to the water cycle. Gaseous cycles tend to move more rapidly than do the sedimentary ones. And uh, here also the differences between gases and sedimentary. The biogenetic material of gases cycle is the gases, and the sedimentary in sedimentary cycle, the biogenetic material is non gases. The reservoir pool in gases cycle is atmosphere and hydrosphere. But in sedimentary cycle, the reservoir pool is lithosphere. The speed in gaseous cycle is very quick, whereas uh, in sedimentary it is usually slow. The gaseous cycles are nearly perfect, whereas the sedimentary are less than perfect. Then the phases of biogeochemical cycles, it is sometimes convenient to distinguish between two phases of biogeochemical cycles, the organic and the abiotic phase. The organic phase is the flow of a chemical element through the food chain can be viewed as the organic phase of the biogeochemical cycle, whereas the abiotic phase is the function of the chemistry of the elements in question and serves as the major reservoirs 
for all nutrient elements external to the food chain. The two classes of abiotic phases are distinguished in biogeochemical cycles. One is a sedimentary phase, which is part of all cycles, and another one is an atmospheric phase, which is possessed by soil. In some cycles, such as nitrogen, the atmospheric phase is more important than the sedimentary. In others, such as phosphorus, the atmospheric phase is essentially non existent. In still others, such as sulfur, both phases are present and their relative importance depends on other environmental factors. Biogeochemical cycles that have dominant atmospheric phases are often called atmosphere reservoir cycles. Those, who sedim those whose sedimentary phases dominant are termed sediment reservoir cycles. Though the moment of nutrients in the abiotic phases tends to be much slower than in the organic phase, the rapidity and direction of nutrient cycling through the abiotic phases determine not only the distribution of the element in the total environment, but also its availability of living systems. Then coming to the concept of flux and residence time. Substances in biogeochemical cycles can move quickly or slowly. Carbon might reside in a plant for days or weeks, in the atmosphere for days or months, in our body for hours, days or years. The earth stores carbon for millions of years. In the quantitative study of biogeochemical cycles, attention is focused on two issues. The rate of movement or cycling of materials is flux and the amount present in any one place at one given time is residence time. It is the flux rather than the concentration that is of prime importance. Flux is conveniently measured in terms of turnover rates and turnover time. The turnover rate is the fraction of the total amount of a substance in a compactment that is released or that enters in a given period of time. And the turnover time is the reciprocal of the turnover rate. It is the time required to replace a quantity of a substance equal to its amount in the compartment. And the residence time, a term widely used in the geochemical literature, is a concept similar to turnover time. It refers to the time a given amount of substance remains in a designated compartment of a system. So the differences between biogeochemical cycle and energy flow are the biogeochemical cycle is the transport and transformation of chemicals in ecosystem where the energy flow is the transport and transformation of energy in ecosystem. In biogeochemical cycle, the process is cyclic where in energy flow, the flow of energy is unidirectional. Biogeochemical cycle is a closed system. And the flow of energy in an ecosystem is an open system. In biogeochemical cycle, there is no dissipation of chemicals at any level, where in energy flow system, the energy dissipated at each level. The reservoir pools of energy occur, occur on Earth in biogeochemical cycle, where uh, energy pools do not occur on Earth. So, coming to the significance of biogeochemical cycles, human activities have influenced biogeochemical cycles in many ways. Man is unique in that not only does he require the 40 essential elements, but also in his complex culture, he uses nearly all the other elements and the newer synthetic ones as well. We have so speeded up the movement of many materials that the cycles tend to become imperfect or the process becomes a cyclic with the result that man increasingly suffers from the paradoxical situation of too little here and too much there. 
when human activities increase flow rates or reduce storage time these materials can become pollutants for example we mine and process phosphate with such careless abandon that severe local pollution results near mines and phosphate mills then with equally acute myopia we increase the input of phosphate fertilizers in agricultural systems without controlling in any way the inevitable increase in runoff output that severely stresses our waterways and reduces water quality through eutrophication so the understanding level by the study of biogeochemical cycles has made us realize that the aim of conservation of natural resources is to make the acyclic processes more cyclic the recycling of water and nutrients is a vital process in ecosystems and is increasingly becoming an important concern for humankind the five major recycling pathways are known by microbial decomposition by animal excretions by direct recycling from plants to plants through microbial symbionts by physical means involving direct action of solar energy by use of fossil energy as in the industrial fixation of nitrogen and um, the biogeochemical cycles supply of light water temperature flow air and nutrient are important to continue the normal system of ecosystem and it play an important role here to continue the optimum situation in ecosystem the recyc recycling requires dissipation of energy from some source such as organic matter solar radiation or fossil fuel the concept of recycle has today become a major goal for the society that is why the importance of biogeochemical cycle is undoubtedly paramount and unavoidable Thank you.